Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you how to make pesto. And I'm going to show you how to make pesto the way I make pesto, which is not a traditional pesto at all. But it's the pesto we've been eating for years and years, and everybody likes it. And everybody asks me how to make it all the time, and I always forget. So I decided to make this video and show you the steps and take it from start to finish, and we'll make a batch of pesto. So the first thing you need is the ingredients. You need some arugula, of course. You know, this is about the right amount. So what is this, five ounces? If you can get away from buying it in these awful plastic boxes, that's good. But this will give you an idea. It's quite a bit of arugula, a lemon, a good juicy lemon, a good handful of peeled garlic. That's according to your taste. Uh, you're going to need some either Romano or uh, Parmesan cheese to grate. You need some almonds. You probably just need about a handful of those raw almonds and a big bunch of cilantro, and a bunch of olive oil, of course, I don't have it here, and some kind of food processor. Okay, the next thing you need to do is to, uh, is to wash all of your greens. Now, I usually chop up the cilantro into sections because it, it means that it won't get so caught up in the food processor. So I chop it into sections about like that. So I can do this with one hand. And the arugula, all oh, this arugula. Throw it right in there. Cold water. I'm catching this arugula. I usually give it about three washings just to make sure. Even though it says it's been washed three times, I don't believe it. So we're going to wash that. And then we'll come back to that in a minute. Okay, now we're going to grind up the ingredients that aren't green. So I'm going to use about a quarter of a cup of garlic. You know, your mileage may vary. I'm going to do about a third of a cup of raw almonds. And if you add more almonds, the pesto is going to be creamier. Um, fewer almonds, it's going to be a little more tart. And about a quarter of a cup of shredded almonds. Right? Top on. And does that a little Now you don't want to make almond butter up. You just want to so it's pretty well. Oh, that looks about right. Maybe just one or two more. Now we're ready to add some greens. So I'm going to take just one big handful of greens and drop it in here. Take my lemon juice, the juice of that one lemon that we saw earlier. Of course, the traditionalists would never use lemon. They would never use a food processor. And they would use basil. And I, to tell you the truth, I almost never use basil unless it's the middle of the summer and there's just so much basil that you don't know what to do with it. I actually much prefer arugula, or you can use dandelion greens, always cilantro in my pesto, and then whatever other green you want. I've even used carrot tops, thanks to Asa, and it's really good. Okay, put this top on, and now what I've found is that if you incorporate the greens just like a handful at a time, they don't get all messed up and plugged up like they do. If you try to do them all at once, then it just kind of spins and makes mush. So each time I add a big handful of greens, a bunch of olive oil, plug, plug, and Okay. 
take a look at that. It's a little dry. You can tell the way it's clinging to the side. So I usually go in with a knife and kind of scrape down the sides. Just distribute it around. Add quite a bit more oil. You don't want to overdo it here. This looks just about right. Let's find a cracker. There's my crackers. Oh yeah, here's some crackers. Or if you have some good bread or something, you can do that. I didn't have any bread. Um, oh yeah, that's good. Then you want to take your big spatula and scoop it out in a bowl and some kind of container to keep. Our house just lasts about a day and a half to this last day. There you have it. Pesto a la Dan. No basil, no mortar and pestle, lemon, almonds, garlic, cheese, and all sorts of greens. And it's it's just really good. It's always dependable. Hope you like it.